Hey everybody, welcome to tonight's pour. Tonight's pour is going to be a Hot Wheels theme painting. As you can see, I have a new Hot Wheels sign right up there. Yeah, so it's going to be a Hot Wheels painting. I got that at Hobby Lobby, 50% off. I think it was only like 10 bucks, which is normally 20. Um, I couldn't pass it up, so... But anyway, I got this car also the same day I got the sign, which was last weekend. And it's a 64 Buick Riviera. And I love it because it's the color of it. Well, the, the lines on it, it's just a nice muscle car. But I love it because of the copper or bronze and the black. It doesn't have flames on it, but I can still love it. But uh, so I uh, decided to go with a copper background or bronze background. I keep saying copper, but it's bronze. This has brown red, but it's actually a bronze metallic -y look to it. And it, normally I would go white and black out the back. And I decided to go with the iridescent graphite. Now, I've not tried this one before, so I, that's kind of one of the reasons I wanted to go with it. So this is actually replacing the black. And then I'm going to use a Master's Touch as well in silver to replace the white. So that's what we're going to do tonight. And I'm going to do the bronze background with the graphite and the silver going out the back. I'm hoping it'll turn out really well. I think it will. The other reason I like um, a bronze colored car is because I think I've told this story before. My first car that I actually bought myself because in high school I drove my, my folks as one of their cars. <clears throat> well, it's kind of my car. I, I mean, I was the only one that drove it. But the, it was their car. They owned it. And it was a, seven, a 68 Malibu. Four-door. Light blue. And it had a license plate on it. It was a vanity plate that said Denise, which is my sister. Because she used to drive it before I did. So that was real cool. Driving around that car. Uh, with a Denise license plate on the back. Uh, so, yeah. I didn't get I didn't get teased at all about that, uh, but uh, that sucker could get up and move. I remember like, my girlfriend lived out ten or twelve miles outside of town, and I would always take her home after a date, and I'd always be running late for my curfew. So I would I would get up to 120, 125 miles coming back into town. And you got to remember Kansas is flat, and I mean it's not all flat, but the majority of it is flat. And where I lived was it was flat, no trees, so it's not like you you know, we're going down a road and there was trees all lined up. It's just, there's fields, corn fields, wheat fields, beans, you name it, it was out there. And so I would just fly home and I, I usually didn't make it on time because I would always spend too much time with my girlfriend, try to stay as late as I could. And that's why I was flying, pretty much flying home. Uh, fortunately, I never hit any deer or pheasant. There was a lot of pheasant out there or like a coyote or a wolf or something. <clears throat> so anyway, but the, my first car that I bought was a 71 Chevelle. It was not the SS, unfortunately, but it was the same body type. Just didn't have, I, I think the only difference was it didn't have the SS on it. It didn't have the, the powerful motor in it, but it's still an awesome car. And uh, it was bronze with a vinyl hard top. I'll try to find a picture of it and put it in here if I remember to edit it in. So there you have it. That's me getting into my car when I was a lot younger, a lot skinnier, and I had a lot more hair. And so, and I was better looking back then too. So um, that that was my car. And uh, so that's why I've always liked bronze cars. And that's when I saw this, I that's the first thing I thought of. And plus I like the style of that car and the sleekness of it. So that's what I wanted to do tonight so I can have that one. If it turns out great, I might just keep this one if my wife will let me, but I'll probably end up selling it because my wife won't let me keep it. But so this is the car we're going to go with. So I've, all I got to do is mix the paints. I got the canvas down. I'll level it and uh, we'll get started. All right. So I've got, I went ahead and put the the bronze on the bottom as the, as the base. And as you can see, I've kind of made some designs in it just by with my palette knife just to give it a little texture and so we're gonna just start right here's the graphite and here's the 
over. And I have decided to put a, just a touch of black on there, not much. I don't want it to overpower it. I'm going to take a look at this here. I may not do anything to this. Um, hopefully it won't sink on me, but uh, I don't know if you can see. There's a, a pattern here. And it almost looks like a 3D effect of kind of like a curtain or something laying. You know, it's, it's a real, th I don't know. It's, a curtain's not a good word for it, but... And this is what it would look like on there. So that bronze really matched there. Did I usually tinker with it? I add some more color to it, but I kind of really like. I really like it. It's almost like you can see through it as well. It's really an amazing effect. I don't know if it's because of the iridescent um, graphite. Because uh, I've never worked with it before. Um, I've seen some people use them on some videos and stuff, but I've, I I don't know. This I think I just might have to leave it like that. I'm not going to mess with it. I'm going to torch it a little bit, but... I think I'm just going to leave it like that. And hopefully it dries like that. Because that does have an, uh, an awesome effect to it. And I tell you what, when if that got re if it stayed like that and it got resin like that, that'd be beautiful. Yeah, I might have to fight my wife on this one and have her let me keep it. Mm. I do want to try to keep this, get this one thing out of there. So I don't know if you can really see that or not, but uh, maybe if I get a close-up, let's see. I don't know if that's too close. See all that right in there where it kind of looks... Mm -mm -mm. So that... Oh, I don't know if that should be... Uh, so that is kind of, oh. so that's going to be the pour and, uh, I'll see how it works out. I might have to cut that off. Boy, I can't keep a camera on my head. I got a big head, big noggin. Um, so it's kind of hard to get it all. I got to really hold it out. 
to get all that head in there. <clears throat> so, oh, I don't even know where my camera is on the front side. So anyway, I look skinnier. I look skinnier up this way, yeah. So I'm gonna cut all this out, so. All right, this is dried. It kind of lost some of that uh, 3D effect that I liked when it uh, was wet, but it still looks pretty good. And uh, I just love the, the matching of the color to the car on the background. So I've got Pro Marine resin, seven ounces. I actually have a little bit more because I got a little heavy handed on mixing. So, but uh, it's an even amount, but it should take seven ounces. And I wanted to get this one resin tonight because I have a show tomorrow and I actually want to take it. Hopefully it'll be, I mean, it'll be dry enough, but hopefully it's not. Sometimes in the morning it's a little sticky. And, you know, it needs some more time to cure. But uh, hopefully by the time I, I'll set it on top of something and in the car and then. This car is all loaded and it takes it. This event actually is about an hour away and setting up time, maybe about an hour, 30 minutes, an hour. And then the event starts at nine. So it'll have a good 12 hours, just about of your time by the time the show starts so it should be to where somebody could pick it up and look at it without it being tacky it's not really sticky it's just tacky is what it is so get all these air muscles out of it And if it is uh, real sticky in the morning, because I'm only afraid of that because of, I didn't, I'm hoping I have the, the two parts mixed evenly. I poured over the three and a half ounces. So I tried to pour over on the, on the epoxy and if the mix isn't right, it can be sticky. I've had to re-resin a piece because it's just tacky. Tacky, tacky, tacky. And uh, the only way to fix that is just put another coat on it. I don't they have to do that once, maybe twice. I, can't. I know I've done it at least once. And when I did my countertops, and my wife talked me into doing our countertops, we had a, two sections of our, because uh, it's not just one big countertop, there's sections. And, uh, so, I mean, like, there's a, there's a countertop between, like, our fridge and the stove. It's a smaller countertop, so I did that one separately. And then we have a, the one on the other side of the stove, which is the biggest one, and it curves around, and it's, it's a place where you can sit and eat the bar stools and stuff on that under you know on that and then we have another of course we had the the island with the sink in it so that so we only did one at a time you know like one one day we didn't do them all you know like one and then do another and we did and then we have a one that's on the other side of the kitchen up against the outer wall of the kitchen and it's kind of our coffee bar area. And so the two of those sections was sticky, tacky. And so I just put another coat on just to get it. And there's still a couple spots we've noticed that um, if we set something on it, like a box of cereal or something, and we let it sit there on the countertop for a day or so, it, it the cardboard will stick to it a little bit. 
But it was our first try. We've never done the countertops, and we kind of just did it to do it. And it still looks good. It still works good. There's just a couple spots on it. So anyway, this one is... This one is definitely... Uh, looks so good, that, that, that collar. I'm going to have to buy some more tubes of that because I just love that, that collar. So... This one is actually kind of at an angle, so I'm gonna put it a little bit at an angle. These don't have to be on there straight. But so I'm gonna put it like right there, so it's not just straight, but you can tell it's coming across there. So there you have it, so that's a good piece. I love the, the how close the color is to the background to the car. Um, I tried to match that up, and I probably couldn't have done a better job of matching this one up. Uh, it, it almost, just looking straight down on it, almost blends into it. Which I like it to stick out, but, I mean, it does, but it is so close, it's, it's really nice. So there you have it. So if you like this video, hit the like button. Please leave a comment, and as always, subscribe to the channel, and, uh, Help us uh, get to our next goal is going to be 300. So we're slowly climbing, but we're getting there. So thanks for watching.